Okay, uh, so this week we will talk about the uh, the second step that in the machine learning, so that is visualizing and also exploring the data. Uh, so if you took my data visualization class last semester, so we kind of have spent um, the entire semester that talked about that how we can visualize the data by using Tableau. So Tableau is a is a professional uh, business intelligence tool. And this week, we will introduce that how we can use a right miner to visualize and also explore the, the data. So we kind of want to reinforce uh, this part. And also we we'll also talk about how we can clean the data um, by, using, by using the right miner prep uh, function. Uh, so that if you remember in Tableau, Tableau also has a tool that called Tableau prep. So both tools uh, have the similar functions that can clean the data, uh, and also Tableau and also RapidMiner also have great uh, visualization functions. Okay, uh, so let's just uh, review the a normal machine learning process. So again, machine cannot real learn the data, so they can only identify the mathematical patterns that from your data. So depending on which models that you selected. Uh, so you need to identify your problem. And then you need to collect, gather your data. So you can gather data from different uh, resources. You can download data directly from a trusted resource. Uh, you can gather data from social media, internet. Uh, you can use I IoT devices to collect the, the real-time data. Uh, you can get data from satellite images, um, sensors, etc. Um, and then you need to integrate data together. So this is where you can use the, the data uh, databases, data warehouse, or data lakes. And then another very important part is that you need to do the data cleaning. So um, so in this entire process. Most data scientists spend 80% of their time in cleaning the data. So clean data cleaning is very, very important. And it's also the most tedious part. And unfortunately, there is no universal rules that can apply for all the data. So it really depending on the specific data and also the specific project you are working with. Uh, so that's why that uh, most time we are spending the time on data cleaning. Okay, so that is also another reason that why we won't spend another week to talk about data cleaning and also data visualization. Uh, so once you have the clean data, you need to understand your data. So this is where you can form the hypothesis and that will also give you a bad understanding, uh, give you just uh, so how the data look like are there any potential patterns that can help you for the next step that is feature engineering and also select the model and also evaluate model. Okay. Uh, so this week we will focus on this part. Um, although we have been talking this part in the data visualization class, or you, if you haven't yet taken that one, so you will learn that in the data visual, visualization class. Okay, uh, so why data visualization is important? So as I said, uh, there are two important functions of data visualization. Uh, the first one is that data visualization can help you explore the patterns and can help you understand your data. So that is why that we, we need to visualize our data. And so that can help us decide, okay, so what are the good features or what are the good attributes that we should use in the following machine learning step. And also once you have your result, if you want to present your result to your clients and by using data visualization, so that can um, enhance the efficiency of the communication. Okay, so data visualization is very important and also it's, uh, it is uh, the one of the best ways to inspect your data. Okay, um, so then let's um, 
talk a little bit about some review some classical uh, statistics, especially the descriptive uh, classical statistics. So if you remember that the um, those uh, three parts of the machine learning, so mathematics or statistics, is a very important part in machine learning, and also the the ability to do the programming or use computers, uh, and also your domain expert. So your domain knowledge. So all, all three together will is very important to be a good data scientist. Okay, so let's review some basic statistics. Um, so first let's talk about the uh, relationship and also distribution. So uh, the way to understand the distribution of a single variable a single feature or a single column, normally we are using those two measures. So one is called the measure of the central tendency, and the second one is called the measure of the dispersion. Okay, and if we want to understand the, the relationship among different or multiple variables or multiple features, then we can use correlation. So correlation can help us identify that if two variables have strong correlation. Okay. Of course, you can also use regression, but regre we'll talk regression in the next week. So here, let's just review that the central tendency, dispersion, and also the correlation. Okay. Uh, so the matter of central tendency. So basically, there are three. Uh, measures to measure the central tendency, mean value. So that simply is a is a mathematical average of all your uh, sample points, um, and also the median. Median is a middle value that all the values are sorted in a descending or the ascending order. Okay. Uh, so the, an important. Uh, an important feature of the median value is that the median value will not be influenced by those outliers. Okay, so not influenced by those outliers. Uh, so you can see here in both examples that the, uh, the median value will be 5. Okay, so in both examples, even on the second example that we, we do have an outlier, but in both examples, uh, the median value is number 5. The mode is just the most frequently occurred value. Okay, uh, so those are the three measures of measuring the central tendency, all determine the central locations of the entire range of the data. A uh, measure of the dispersions. So there are. So basically, we want to know that uh, are the data sent, uh, concentrated, okay, or scattered. So normally there are two or two. Um, type of the dispersion, either concentrated or scattered. Um, so here we have three types of measures. So we can use the range, which is the difference between the smallest and largest. Uh, we can also use the variance or standard deviations. Okay, so the variance and also standard deviations. Uh, so variance is uh, average of square difference between each value and the mean. And the standard deviation is just a square root of the mean. Okay, so uh, so uh, so they are the they are much similar, but standard deviation is just easy to interpret. Um, and also remember that depending on if you are on the sample or if you are on the population, so um, the formula will be different. Okay, so if you are calculating the means uh, for the population, okay, uh, so the formula will be different from if you're calculating uh, the variance or means uh, from the sample. Okay, so here I give you the formula for the variance for the population. Okay, uh, so in most cases, I don't think you need to remember those formulas because a lot of tools like uh, Tableau and RipeMiner, they all give you, they all provide those functions that you can calculate those functions um, very easy. I think the most important part is that you understand the meaning of those um, measures and also how you can interpret 
uh, those variables, those narrows. Okay, um, and also correlation. So correlation can tell you that how two variables are related. So do they have a very strong correlation or do they have a very weak correlation? So the correlation efficiency is uh, probably the most popular measures that measures the correlation. So um, here again, I gave you the formula, but I don't think you, you need to remember the formula. So basically the correlation coefficient is a unit list a mirror and it's between negative zero, so which is perfect and correlated, and also one, positive zero or one, so negative one and also positive one. So positive one stands for the perfect correlated. Okay, uh, so here is, is an example. So, uh, so here if two variables, so like variable A and also B, if they are positively correlated, so that means that the value of B will increase when the value of A also increase, or when the variable A or feature A increase. Okay, and if there is no correlation or if they have a zero or around zero, so that means that B and A they are not correlated. So when the value B increase, and value A um variable A might decrease or might increase, okay? So there's no um, very obvious uh, relationship between A and B. And if A and B have negative, variable A and B have a negative correlations in this case, so that means if B increase and A will decrease, okay? So if B increase and also A will decrease, okay? Um, so that is what is uh, when, that is statistician that when we have a negative correlation. All right. Um, so here's some important um, here's something that important you have to remember. So first, the correlation can only tell that whether or not they have linear relationship, okay? So if you see if you have a correlation of zero, it just means that they, those variables do not have a linear relationship. They may still have some type of other sort of relationships. They just do not have linear relationship. So for example, in this case, you can see the variable x and also the variable y. Okay, variable x and also variable y. So if you calculate the correlation by using the formula, you will see they have zero correlation. However, there are certainly a relationship between x and y because the y are the absolute, absolute values of x. So they do have a correlation, but those relationships are not linear. Okay? And also correlation cannot tell you that how large the relationship is. Okay, you can see x has uh, variable has very small numbers and a y variable have relative big numbers okay um, but x have high variation and y has low variation okay but x and y are perfect correlated but um, uh, that's really depending on what you measure so here you can see x and y are perfect correlated so if you calculate a correlation uh, so they will have very high correlation efficient, uh, but that's really depending on how you interpret the results. So do you think, if you look at the data, do you really think that the, the relationship is that strong? So when I look at that, I, I will not think they have very strong relationship, but if you calculate the correlation, the correlation efficient will be very, very high. Um, and also, I think you might have heard this one, but even X and Y are strongly correlated, uh, it might mean that A cos X cos Y, or it might mean that Y cos X, or it might mean that X and Y are caused by a same factor Z. Okay, it's also possible. 
it is also highly uh, possible that highly likely that it's just a coincidence. So it might mean nothing. Okay, when x and y have very high correlation, it might mean it might just mean nothing. So it's just a coincidence. Uh, so let's see this example. So here you can see that we have two variables. So the number of the ice cream seals and also number of the shark attacks. And you can see if you plot those two variables on the on this line chart, and you can see both of them are highly correlated. But I don't think that one variable is a cause of the another variable. So ice cream cannot cause the shark attack. And a shark attack cannot also cause the ice cream seal. Okay, so keep in mind that even X and Y have high strong correlation, it just might be a coincidence. So it's just a mess game. So it might mean it might mean nothing at all.